My name is Ramon uh, López de Mantaras. I am a research professor at the Artificial Intelligence Institute of the Spanish National Research Council uh, in uh, Barcelona area. I've been working in artificial intelligence for quite a long time now, and uh, among other things, I've been uh, using AI uh, to generate expressive music performances. Um, one of my hobbies is uh, uh, piano playing, and I play uh, jazz and, and Brazilian music and a little bit of uh, classic music. I do not think there are fundamental differences between artistic and scientific creativity. Both involve the same kind of elements, of creativity elements. Both the scientists and the artists try to represent the reality beyond uh, appearances. I believe that at the moment of creative insight, boundaries uh, dissolve between disciplines and both artists and scientists search for new forms of aesthetics. That was certainly the case with Albert Einstein and Pablo Picasso. They were both trying to understand the true properties of space and to reconcile them with how space is perceived relative to different observers. It is interesting to notice that Einstein discovered relativity and Picasso discovered cubism almost simult simultaneously. Art has been and is much inspired by science. There are hundreds, even thousands of examples in practically all the arts, from visual arts to music, as well as in performing arts such choreography. In music, Yanis Shenaki's uh, stochastic music is particularly interesting, since it is based on complex concepts from physics and statistics. Apply it, apply it, of course, to music composition, such as statistical mechanics, particularly Brownian motion, that's to model, that is used to model the motion of particles suspended in a medium, either liquid or, or, liquid or gas. Uh, Shinakis used this technique uh, in, in several musical pieces. Uh, one of them is, for example, uh, entitled uh, Pithopracta. Uh, he also used a statistical distribution of points on a plane in another piece entitled uh, Diamorphosis. Or he still used uh, Gaussian distributions in another piece entitled ST-10. And even more interesting, the application of Markov chains, uh, Markov chains in another piece called Analogics. That was, uh, that was particularly interesting because nowadays Markov chains are still used in AI music composition. Besides, he even used uh, game theory in another, in, another, in other pieces, for example, one entitled uh, Duel and a Strategy. Uh, Shenakis, uh, where it's interesting to say, that had a degree in engineering, and therefore he had a good knowledge of all these uh, rather complex uh, mathematical and physical uh, concepts. Uh, let me mention some examples of visual arts that have been inspired by science. In my opinion, these are very interesting examples. Let's start with uh, Marcel Duchamp. He had read about Einstein's theory of relativity, and according to some essays, it seems that this had an influence uh, in depicting uh, the successive points in time, that is, the fourth dimension, of an abstract human figure in motion, descending a staircase. The title of this painting is Nu de Sandan and Escalier. Also, Vasily Kandinsky was very influenced by uh, geometry as well as relativity, and particularly by the famous uh, equation relating energy and mass, E equals mc squared. He took that equation to mean that everything is fundamentally amorphous, energy being amorphous. So he reflected this idea in his paintings. Regarding the influence of uh, geometry uh, in Kandinsky, uh, Kandinsky in his book Point and Line to Plane, he developed the theory of a line, or that, excuse me, that a line, uh, not necessarily straight line, could be a curve, uh, 
uh, is generated by a moving point. And finally, multiple lines intersecting, interacting, they define a basic plane to produce a complex composition where coloring of this composition was, is associated with the different slopes of the lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines, diagonal lines. Uh, painting such as transverse line, a small dream in red, or composition eight, and many others, are an exemplification of this, of this theory. On the other hand, a mathematical logic paradoxes, such as the self-reference paradox, have also influenced many artists. The surrealist painter René Magritte is famous for his self-reference works. Possibly his best known creation uh, is the work entitled La Trahison, La Trahison des Images, that includes the, 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 the sentence Ceci n'est pas une pipe, just below a painting, a drawing, a representation of a, of a pipe. Right? Uh, the, what is interesting in this, in, this, uh, in this painting is that the truth depends, the truth of the sentence, depends uh, entirely on whether the word ceci uh, refers to the pipe depicted, to the sentence, or to the painting itself. Another um, artist that was also influenced by science was uh, uh, M.C. Escher. Escher also contain uh, used self-referential concepts such as, for example, this famous painting about uh, hands drawing themselves, one hand, dra one hand dra drawing uh, another hand. Of course, uh, self-reference uh, also occurs in literary work. For instance, uh, the, in many writings of Jorge Luis Borges, he was playing with uh, self-reference. Possibly the artist that was more clearly influenced by science was Salvador Dalí. His interest in science began at an early age. As an adolescent, he read scientific articles. He had a library of approximately 100 books on physics, quantum mechanics, the origins of life, evolution, and mathematics. Besides, Dalí uh, subscribed to many science uh, journals uh, through which he kept up to date with scientific thought and trends. He even filled with notes and comments the margins of many of his science books. An example of a painting uh, clearly influenced by uh, Dali's interest in physics and mathematics is Nature Morte Vivante, painted during a period that he called nuclear mysticism. Nuclear mysticism is based on a variety of theories seeking to demonstrate the relationship between the consciousness, the consciousness or conscious mind and quantum physics. Another painting by Dali that demanded significant mathematical elaboration is the one entitled Crucifixion. Indeed, uh, this work uh, shows a magnificent hypercubic Christ whose rendering required quite a significant geometric knowledge. Uh, Dali was also influenced by genetics and DNA, and he even paid homage to Watson and Crick in a very large painting with a title almost impossible to pronounce. Let me try it. The title is Galacida Lassi Desoxyribonucleic Acid. No more, no less. Uh, and as a subtitle is how much to Watson and Crick. Obviously, uh, technology has always profoundly affected art, and especially today, because of more and more artists are increasingly influenced by artificial intelligence. Um, the influence of art in science is perhaps less common, or, or at least less known, than the influence of science in art. However, it seems that the physicist Niels Bohr had read a book on cubist theory entitled Du Cubisme, and it inspired him to postulate that an electron is both a particle and a wave. But when you observe it, 
you pick out one of these particular viewpoints, either a particle or a, a, a wave. In Cubism, artists also try to represent a scene from all possible point of views on the canvas. And the observer also picks out one particular viewpoint. So we, you, are, we are, you can see the relation. It is also said that uh, the chemist uh, August Kekulé had a somnolent vision of the image of a snake biting its own tail. A dream that supposedly revealed to him the ring structure of the benzene instead of being a, a chain. The image of a snake biting itself is clearly related to the mathematical logic paradox of self-reference. Perhaps uh, we could say that scientists who are particularly sensitive to aesthetics, beauty and form might have some creative advantage. In my opinion, what scientists and artists have in common is that they see reality in new ways. For instance, while everyone else saw a pendulum swinging back and forth, Galileo saw it falling and rising. In that way, he was able to do groundbreaking work on the nature of falling bodies. Every great artist has seen the world in a new way. That's exactly what Einstein did too. His early papers were very conceptual, especially the 1905 paper on a special uh, relativity. Uh, this paper has very few equations and the, di the data that he used has been, uh, had been around for, for quite some time. He just saw and conceptualized the problems in a new way. It is important to notice that both in art and science, discoveries are made by breaking rules. For instance, the rule of, sing of a single vanishing point was broken by cubism, or the rule of tonality in music was uh, broken by Arnold Schoenberg uh, with the so-called dodecaphonic music. Breaking rules is something that AI AIs, artificial intelligence, cannot really do. Although it is fair to say that the vast majority of humans, neither. But what's really interesting about the highest levels of creativity of geniuses like Einstein or Picasso is that they did not push their discoveries farther by themselves. For instance, Picasso never moved into abstract expressionism and Einstein didn't believe in quantum mechanics, not even in black holes, who, by the way, are a consequence of his general theory of relativity. It seems that a genius burns, burns brightly for a while and then burns out. Is it perhaps that young revolutionaries become conservatives as time goes by?